The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. All right, good to go. Uh, good afternoon. I'm going to present on behalf of uh, Professor Matias Hube that had to leave uh, earlier today. So um, what I'm going to present here is, um, but there, there are the people that are, have participated in this, uh, in, in part of this, uh, preparing this presentation. Um, what I'm going to talk to you here is um, about a, a similar uh, as the previous presenter, uh, the, the problem that uh, occurred after uh, large earthquakes, uh, especially with the uh, uh, reinforced concrete uh, wall buildings. Yeah. In 1985 and 2010 uh, earthquakes, there was a, a large uh, number of uh, buildings that were damaged. Huh? Um, after the 1985 uh, earthquake, uh, uh, many buildings were repaired and only one was uh, actually demoli demolished. After the 2010 earthquake, uh, uh, um, from an inventory of 36 uh, buildings, uh, 25 were repaired, eight were demolished, and two are uh, still at this time waiting for a decision. Uh, it's a, a very uh, difficult decision to to um, to uh, demolish a, a building. Uh, so um, it, it is important to to have uh, tools to to um, define if a, if a building can be repaired or not. Um, in the end, uh, the, all the demolished buildings represented about 22 percent of the of that inventory, uh, but that represents only 0.4 percent of uh, the total number of uh, buildings in the area that was uh, affected by the the earthquake. Huh? Well, and as was said before. Uh, after the 2011 uh, earthquake in New Zealand, 60% uh, of the reinforced concrete buildings were um, were demolished. Uh, so it's uh, um, I think here it's an important matter to to know how or when uh, when and how to um, repair a building. Uh, object uh, here I want to uh, summarize the observed damage and adopted repair techniques in some buildings in Chile. I want to show you what has been done, um, provide evidence of the uh, repair buildings, and uh, at the end show uh, preliminary, res preliminary result results of a, of a current research uh, project, um, very similar to what was presented before, uh, but on a different kind of uh, walls. Uh, there was that we were we had at the time of the 2010 uh, earthquake. This is a, a building that is uh, located in Viña del Mar, that's uh, on the coast, uh, 100 kilometers from Santiago, the capital. Uh, this building was damaged in 1985. Uh, um, it's an uh, almost 50 year old building. It was damaged in 1985 and Mostly, the damage was uh, on the on the walls on the, um, along these uh, curved uh, walls. Um, the the repair of the walls was uh, performed by adding um, a parallel uh, reinforcement, and then uh, um, I mean the demolishing part of the the wall and then adding a new layer of uh, steel connected to the previous uh, layer that was exposed and then uh, adding more uh, concrete to uh, enlarge the thickness of the wall. Huh? That was the main um, repair to that building and after the 2010 earthquake, uh, those uh, walls 
suffer, uh, didn't suffer much uh, damage, and most of the damage at this time was transferred now to the uh, slabs. Uh, um, um, again, the building was repaired and only the slabs, and the slabs were repaired by adding, uh, again, a, a new layer of, uh, of uh, concrete with uh, reinforcement. The reinforcement was uh, connected to the, to the previous, um, to the existing uh, concrete by this uh, uh, ties uh, uh, distributed on the, on the, on the slabs. Yeah? So this building uh, has, has suffered two, uh, two large earthquakes, uh, and the first one was uh, uh, heavily damaged the, the the walls, but later were, they were repaired. And the second earthquake, those uh, repaired um, walls didn't suffer much damage, but so the damage was transferred now to the to the slabs. Uh, there's a second uh, building again in Viña del Mar, in the coast. Uh, this is a uh, um, an 11 story building with uh, one basement. Uh, it has uh, important damage. And it was a, a, a building that was only 12 years old, old at, at the time of the, 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 the damage. And the damage was concentrated in these two walls. Uh, one uh, on, on the left there. Uh, um, that was large damage I'm going to show you uh, in a second. And then our damage in another wall that was uh, also repaired. So the first one was, is this one. This is uh, actually, uh, this is the first floor. Uh, this is a, a, a long wall that has uh, almost uh, all, all the stories, uh, 10 stories maybe, um, with, with some uh, holes. And in the, at, the, at the first floor, this large wall have only two, these uh, large uh, columns. Yeah. So it's a, there's a, a vertical ir irregularity. Uh, so there was a concentrated damage here. This, uh, this wall down here, um, you can see here the, the, the reinforcement. Uh, there is no much um, confinement. Yeah? Uh, and the, the repair technique was to uh, increase the size of the wall by adding um, um, at, the, at the end, um, a new reinforcement and also transfer the reinforcement to confine the the, the element. Huh? The other wall that was uh, damaged in in several uh, stories uh, had mostly. A, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'm sorry. This is uh, the second wall that was uh, damaged in the uh, close to the first one. Yeah. Uh, damage was uh, mostly um, compression. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> in this case, the, the the repair consisted in in uh, f first thing uh, the the this kind of walls didn't have any confinement at the at the ends. Uh, uh, that's different from the walls shown in the, in the previous presentation, uh, and the, so the. Re repair consisted in adding um, boundary elements with a, a, an important a number of uh, longitudinal reinforcement and transverse reinforcement to produce uh, confinement. And also, in this case, was decided to add, to increase the, the thickness of the wall, uh, to uh, uh, increase the shear strength of, of it. To, to do that, again, the, the same technique used in the previous uh, building uh, was used here by, by um, adding, um, in this case, two layers of uh, steel and elements that connect the new, uh, the uh, bars that, that connect the new uh, concrete with the uh, existing concrete. Huh? Uh, the, rep the repair cost was about 33% of the cost of the new building, uh, and here it says that 40% of the repair cost was attributed to structural elements. Uh, the non-structural elements took about 60% of the of the repair cost. Um, this one is in the same buildings, building. I mean, uh, walls that uh, have uh, uh, several um, 
sheer uh, uh, cracking. Yeah, those uh, these walls were uh, located at the uh, opposite end of the building. Uh, these walls were uh, repaired by uh, injecting them, but also injecting the cracks. I mean, and also adding uh, FRP. Yeah. Um, this is the uh, maybe one of the first time that they use FRP in walls in in Chile. Yeah. They they have used in mostly in slabs and, and beams. Um, and then the, there is this uh, third building. This is a building located in Santiago. These are two uh, towers, 18 stories and two basements. The two, uh, it, this one on the left is one tower, the other one with the, the other color is a second tower. Um, they, uh, they are very, uh, they are uh, similar, yeah? well, almost uh, uh, symmetrical. Um, and the damage was also symmetrical. Yeah, many uh, walls were severely damaged in the in the basement. Yeah? The ones show here in the in red. Yeah, uh, all the walls in oriented in the same uh, direction. Mm -hmm. Here you can see the the type of damage on these uh, walls. Again, these walls had a, a almost non uh, confinement. Yeah, in this case. They may have some uh, transverse reinforcement, but it wasn't designed as a, actually as a boundary element. Huh? Um, so you can see that again, the, the same type of damage in all of the walls mm -hmm. um, uh, due to uh, large uh, compression uh, stresses. Um, again, the, the same technique as used before was, uh, was, was used here. Uh, um, a boundary element was uh, uh, built at the at the end by adding um, a lot of uh, new reinforcement, longitudinal reinforcement, and transfer reinforcement, and also the the thickness of the wall was uh, increased yeah. by demolishing the the existing uh, concrete, adding the new a new layer of uh, reinforcement and uh, and transverse new transfer reinforcement and uh, uh, a second layer in this case. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> Here you can see a uh, wall, let me go back, wall uh, Q, this one. Uh, this is wall Q, and this is the repair wall. Uh, I hope you can, you can see here the the increase in thickness of the, at the end of the, the wall, but because there is the boundary element that was uh, built here. Yeah. So, so the, uh, these are the types of uh, uh, repairs that were done after the earthquake. Um, these repairs were done without uh, doing any uh, experiment like the ones that were shown before to, to see if this kind of repairs, what is the result? I mean, what is going to happen with these uh, kind of buildings? Uh, what happens with the, the stiffness uh, of the new buildings, what happens with the actual uh, um, uh, strength, uh, deformation capacity. I mean, they, they're, they are adding here um, boundary elements, uh, thinking in adding um, and increasing or decreasing the, the, the brittleness of the, or the fragility of the, the building. So uh, currently, um, we, have a, we have a research uh, program that uh, Professor Matias is the principal investigator um, called Seismic Capacity of Repair Reinforced Concrete Wall Buildings that the main objective is, objective is to evaluate the seismic capacity of uh, repair uh, walls that were uh, walls that were repaired using some of the some of those uh, um, techniques uh, that were um, applied after the 2010 earthquake. Huh? Um, also, we, we are going to evaluate the residual capacity of uh, damaged wall, uh, walls. And uh, in the first um, stage, we're going to test six walls. Later, we're going to test at least four more walls. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm going to show you some preliminary results, huh? just uh, some uh, curves that we, we haven't done much analysis yet. 
yet. Um, this is uh, one of the walls. We, we tested four walls that are uh, slender walls. Uh, the aspect ratio is uh, 2.5, and two walls that have a smaller uh, aspect ratio. It's uh, around one, I think. Uh, this is one of the. This is the shorter wall, and and these are the longer walls. This lo this wall have uh, the detailing. You can see down here, no boundary elements. So we're trying to to uh, reproduce the walls that were damaged during the the earthquake. Uh, to do that, we we look at some uh, buildings like the second building that um, that I showed, um, and took the the look at how the walls were designed at that time, and we used those kind of uh, re details. Um, we tested um, here four walls. Uh, this is the setup of the testing. Um, and we, we, we have walls uh, M1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, M1 and M3 were tested to a uh, drift level. These were target drift levels. Some of them may, may have been uh, optimistic, uh, and they were. <laughs> And um, so the, the idea was to produce different uh, levels of damage. Uh, so M1 was uh, to uh, 2%, and M3, uh, the idea was to get to 3%, and actually went to 2 point something. Huh? Um, and then it uh, failed. And uh, M, M2 and M4, we, we did... Um, we uh, tested the walls up to two and one and a half percent in this case, and later we tested it again to uh, uh, up to severe damage. Huh? Here's a, a picture of one of the walls um, showing the, the damage. Uh, uh, we have um, um, the, re the reinforcement buckle. Uh, in some cases, the reinforcement uh, was a fail, I mean, was a rupture. Um, and there's, there's some of the hysterectic uh, response. Well, this is one of the, this is M1, and this is M, M2, part one, but, uh, I mean, part two. Yeah. So um, you can see that there is a, uh, an obvious increase of uh, initial uh, um, stiffness. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then here I have uh, two, two te three tests, two walls. Yeah. Um, and then you can see in, in yellow is the, the wall tested in a second part. And you can see that, of course, there's an a important decrease of uh, stiffness. Uh, but in, in the end, the, the um, maximum uh, load and and the deformation, maximum deformation, it's similar to the, the wall that had, it didn't have any initial damage. Huh? Um, these walls are going to be repaired huh? using those techniques. We haven't decided exactly which technique are going to, to use. Uh, we're open to suggestions also. Huh? Thank you.